The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Rio Verde, Arizona, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 34964. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Let's start at the uh, front bumper. On the face of the front bumper, you have dual air horns on the passenger and driver side. Located directly in the center is your PA speaker electronic siren. As we move up on top of the bumper extension area, you'll find a D-handle will gain you access into the front tubbed storage location for your hose storage. Moving to the driver side, you'll find your mechanical siren. Moving up onto the cab itself, on the outer edge you'll find a marker turn indicator light. Just inside that location you'll find the headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights. High beam is located on the inside. Just above that you'll find the emergency warning light forward facing cluster. As we look to the Pierce logo directly behind, that's going to be the release mechanism to gain access into the hood. As we move up onto the windshield, there are three windshield wipers across the seamless one-piece windshield. As we move to the outer edge, you'll find your mirror housing a flat and convex mirror controlled from within inside the driver's space. Moving up to the brow, you'll find five clearance lights across the very top. And located in the center, you'll find a forward-facing floodlight. Moving up onto the roof of the apparatus, emergency warning light bar. Let's take a look at some items. Let's take a look first at the driver's side of the vehicle, full length. And then let's take a look at the passenger side, full length. And let's go back and highlight some of the items we just talked about with your front bumper area. Bumper extension. This is the location where you would find to release the mechanism to gain access into the hood. As you move back downward to the bumper extension, this is your center front discharge. It is foam capable. As we look inside, there's a swivel inch and a half discharge, dry deck material inside, and then mounted on top, top side is where you're going to find your mechanical siren. Let's move around into the cab area. We'll start with the driver's side. As we open the door into the door panel inside, you'll find all of our safety and warning placard information affixed to the door panel door lock and latch located in the combination area and then just up from that location you'll find window controls for all four electric windows and a grab handle. Let's move to the step well where you'll find a recessed air inlet. As we move to the driver's seat area you'll find comfort controls on the very front side of the seat. This is an air ride seat. You'll also find some warning placard information. We'll go over those in just a few moments. As we move to the floor left side of the driver, you'll find a foot pedal, controls the mechanical siren. As we move upward, you'll find a panel. We'll talk a little bit about that electrical panel. And at the very top, this is your master battery switch. Let's go back to that uh, yellow placard. This is your placard manufactured from Pierce. It has the date of manufacture, five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, VIN number, fluid capacities for the component, fluid capacity type, and also the amount. Let's go back to the floorboard. This is the mechanical siren foot pedal to activate. As we move to about the left knee of the operator, this is that switch panel we talked about, tech module, transmission ABS diagnostic port and display port, also ABS diagnostic and engine diagnostic. This is also where you'll control your region inhibit and DPF region switch. Moving up to the dash, on the left you're going to find four-way flashers or hazard lights, ignition and start on the left, switch labeled EM which stands for emergency master. This will engage or disengage all emergency lights with one button, headlight and panel lights. On the far right, high idle indicator and switch to engage the high idle. Transmission oil, def level and water temp gauges on the left hand side. On the right you're going to find volts and fuel, front air and rear air. Directly in the center is your tachometer and speedometer. Diagnostic engine information displays above and below the speedometer. Let's move just to the right of the driver's seat within preview of the operator. This is your pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. It is the yellow diamond. These are your brakes. 
Moving to the right, you'll find your command zone. Tremendous amount of information right here at your fingertips. Please see the owner's manual for more information. Let's move just to the right where you'll find your Allison transmission pad. Once again, tremendous amount of information right here at your fingertips. See your owner's manual for more information. Allison digital readout transmission. You'll see you have an informational note to pump in drive. You have an air horn switch at the very top. We have an engine brake on and off switch. Settings for low, medium, and high for that engine brake. And on the far right, we have a mirror heat. Let's move further to the right at the very top section. You're going to find your road to pump and also pump to road. This is your pump shift. Instructions both on left and right side. When exiting the cab for pump operations, you need two green indicators, pump engaged and OK to pump. Also, disengage the retarder when on wet or slippery surfaces. Mirror control for the left and right mirror. Climate control. As we move overhead, we have the height of the vehicle, 9 feet, 8.6 inches. Length, 31 feet, 10.5 inches. Gross vehicle weight rating, 46,800 pounds. Also, as we move to the right, we have a few switches. Let's start at the front with the emergency master. Roof light, front warning, side warning, upper rear warning, lower rear warning, high beam flash, and load manager. When any of these switches are active, they will show the green indicator around them. As we move to the right, you'll find the front flood, driver's side scene, passenger side scene, rear scene, and you have a red siren brake. This is for your mechanical siren. Let's move just to the right of this location where a few modules. First, we have your traffic advisor. It's an on, off, and low, and also left, right, split, and flash. Siren control and PA system. In the center, you'll find your red indicating someone is in the seat and not belted. Green, they are in the seat and belted. You'll also find if flashing, do not move your apparatus. You have a door or compartment open. As we move to the exterior, vehicle is equipped with a TAC-4 independent front suspension. Idle reduction technology. Let's move down to the red plug. This is the auto eject shoreline inlet. When plugged into shoreline power, the battery volt will indicate you're plugged in and maintain and charge your vehicle. Also to the right, this is the IRT charger. As we move downward, you'll find Goodyear tires and Alcoa wheels center sight gauge for your axle. Let's move to the rear. Once again, affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch, window control, and also a grab handle. As we look overhead, you'll find push on and off white or red lights, and then also your air conditioning unit. In the very center at the back of the engine, lift and turn latch will gain you access in the center area for your daily checks for oil and transmission. This is an access panel. As we move to the rear wall, you'll find two seats, SCBA style. As we move just under that seat, you'll find when plugged into shoreline power, this is your battery charger. It will become active. Also on the exterior, we've got a 7.3 DEF tank. Let's move to the pump panel area. We'll start at the very top section with the cross lay. We'd like to point out because this is a cross lay, there is the possibility of entanglement hazard, and that's why we have a warning placard. You have crosslay 1, crosslay 2, and a 2.5 inch crosslay. Each of these are capable of foam, and you can see that by indicating the red and then also the label indicating foam. As we move downward, you'll find your Husky 3 foam specifications. Also in the red module is your Husky foam system on and off at the upper left corner of the green button. Also instructions on how it's operation, and then also a foam level indicator for tank A. As we move to the gray module, this is your master intake and master discharge gauges. In between the two of those are the test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. They're currently plugged and those are for testing purposes. We do have discharges here. They are color coded and labeled to each of those discharges. As we move further down, you'll find your minimum operation maintenance schedule. We'll go over that in just a moment. And then also as we move down, you'll find your two and a half inch large diameter discharges, clearly color coded and labeled. As we move further down, you'll find your pressure throttle governor. Moving to the right, you'll find an audible alarm. The outer edge of that bezel does rotate so you can increase or decrease sound level. 
Also an indicator, pump OK to pump indicator. It's a green light. And then also panel lights. Tank, reel, tank fill and recirculating line. Right next to that, you'll find your water tank level indicator. And then also an engine cooler, which is a twist, not a pull. To the right, you're going to find a warning placard indicating do not ride on the vehicle. And also when climbing onto the vehicle, make sure you face the vehicle when climbing on or off. Down at the bottom, you have a tank to pump. And right next to it is your fire pump primer. It is a push to prime air prime. It does have an informational uh, placard indicating at least 1,000 for best practices on your RPMs. We do ask a warning here. Only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment, and that's only after you received proper training. There are two two and a half inch discharges located on the driver's side. Also, your watchress placard indicating the capacity of your pump, 2,000 GPM. As we move down, you'll also find an additional warning placard here, kind of cut off, but let's go over it. It is a warning regarding pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious. Minimum operation maintenance schedule. We'll go over that in a few moments too. Also the Pierce logo American Flag Eagle. This is your large diameter driver side inlet. And to the right, we have your manual pump shift and then also the main pump drain. Let's take a look. There are two Pandoras. The upper Pandora is an access door uh, for gaining access inside and behind the pump panel. We'll go to the bottom one in just a moment. Let's move across to the very bottom where you'll find all of our color-coded and labeled discharge drains. Also, we have an additional pressure warning hazard. Once again, caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. As we move to the right, you'll find the Number one, left side, two and a half inch female auxiliary inlet, locally controlled ball valve. Also your foam lever, which is the draft or tank option, and then a fill hose at the bottom. Warning placard, do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. Lift and turn latch gauge the access to this location. This is for your foam fill operations. There is a instruction placard on the back of the door, and it matches the yellow handle, which is just inside. Underneath the uh, running boards, you'll find your foam pump discharge drain and foam pump intake drain. And then let's go over the watchers placard. 1, 000, I'm sorry, 2,000 GPM. As we move to the minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. On the left-hand side of the associated GPM at test pressure. On the right side is the RPM at test pressure. We do have a govern speed of 2,100. That's when in pumping mode. Let's move through the compartments now. We have LED lighting, adjustable shelves, and also a pull-out tray on the very bottom. Release mechanism for that tray is on the lower right-hand side. As we move to the center compartment, you'll find an adjustable tray. Just beneath that, you'll find two SCBA compartments, front and rear of the axle, and then also the fill location for your ultra low sulfur diesel, which is the silver cap, and I've got a few images of that next. Your rear axle is um, Goodyear tires and now Coa wheels. Back up to those uh, diesel fill location. Once again, silver cap, ultra low sulfur diesel. Let's move to the rear compartment. This is a pass through compartment on the lower section, shelving on the upper portion, and a pull out tray in the lower right. Just underneath that, you'll find folding wheel chocks. Release mechanism for this tray is on the lower right. Full view with all compartments open. Let's move around to the rear of the apparatus and go through some items here. As we move to the rear, we do have a roll-up door. Inside, you'll find an adjustable shelf. Let's go ahead and move to the left of the image where you'll find uh, two switches, rear scene lights, and then also hose bed lights. As we move up from this location, you'll find some warning placards. When climbing onto the vehicle, always face the vehicle. Also. Pressure hazard warning. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. And then also at the bottom, never ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. At the very top, we have a two and a half inch rear discharge. As we move to the center, you'll find your traffic advisor and then also a warning regarding entanglement hazard. Because of those lines coming from aloft, there is the possibility of entanglement. As we move to the passenger side, so you'll find your ladder storage. You have a 24 foot roof, 14 foot, sorry, 24 foot extension, 14 foot roof, pike poles, and a 10 foot attic. As we move around, all compartments now open on the passenger side. Let's start at the rear. Adjustable shelving, pull out tray in the lower right. The release mechanism for that tray is located on the right hand side of the release mechanism track. 
As we move to the center compartment, you'll find once again adjustable shelving, LED lighting, two SCBAs in front of and two to the rear. Once again, down at the bottom, Goodyear tires and Alcoa wheel. As we move to the next image, I would like to point out um, this warning placard, extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures do exist. Be very cautious where you park your vehicle. As we move to the next compartment, adjustable shelf, pull out tray in the lower compartment. Once again, release mechanism located on the right portion of the slide tray. Let's go to the mid section. Start at the very top section with your cross lays. Same configuration as you have on the driver's side. I would like to point out the warning label, entanglement hazard. As we move down, you'll also find two placards here, pressure hazard and then also fall hazard. As we move inside the Pandora, this is going to be your relief valve. It is a setting on the outside that you can adjust. And then also large diameter discharge and a two and a half inch discharge on the passenger side. On the very bottom section, you'll find all of your color-coded labeled discharge drains. We're now back to the cab area in the very rear section and affixed to those door panels, we're gonna find all of our safety and warning placard information. Also at the hinge point, you'll find a red grab handle for getting access in and out of the cab. Overhead, better image here of the push on or off white or red lenses in your air conditioning unit. Also, SCBA bracketed seats. We're back out to the front. Good near tire, Alcoa wheel, and a sight gauge located in the front axle. As we move to the forward section, once again, tack force suspension, idle reduction technology. Moving now to the front officer seat, affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information. Door lock and latch, electric window control, and the grab handle. As we move to the floorboard, you'll find your mechanical siren foot pedal. As we move to the dash, your vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system, airbag. Uh, please do not mount anything within this area. Just up from this location, we do have a glove box located in the very front section of the officer seat. And then just to the left, you'll find an air horn push button. Moving further back, you'll find 12 volt barrel style and also USB plugs and your vehicle data recording port. Overhead, push on and off red or white lens, and then also storage location. We're back now to the outside at the very top section, hose storage. We have two dividers located in the rear. As we move to the center, you have your top mounted deck gun. Just to the right of that location is where you'll find your Husky Foam System 3. This is the fill location and check location for the hydraulic oil. Also top fill water tank location and then also top fill foam tank location. We do have a warning placard on the foam. Do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. Here's a close up of the foam tank again. It does have a locking latch on it and then also that warning placard. Just an additional view here, your idle reduction technology. Husky foam system, you can see the very top, the cap is the fill location. Looking now at the cross lays. As we move to the cab, this is a non-walking surface and that's why we have these warning placards here indicating that this is a slippery surface and not to be intended to walk on. The next set of uh, six or so images are going to be that of the under portion of the chassis, just for reference. Then let's go ahead and look to the front cab area. We have it tilted forward at a 45 degree angle and we also have the hood open. As we look inside, um, we're gonna find on the passenger side, this is your windshield wiper fluid fill location 
and you want to check this when the cab is in the level position. Also, as we move just to the right of this location, we're going to find the fill location for your coolant. And then there are also instructions on how to tilt the cab and then how to lower the cab. The red button is either raise or lower and the yellow black knob on the top is the activation. To the right is your power steering location for fill and also gauge. Additional photos here of the engine compartment area. This image is showing the hydraulic reservoir for the cab tilt. Congratulations Rio Verde, Arizona on your new Pierce fire apparatus job number 34 964. If you have any questions regarding your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.